Hi everyone, welcome to a video, my final one for the Cheltenham Festival 2013. This is obviously for day four, which is pretty much known as Gold Cup Day, really. Uh, one of my favourite uh, days on the card, actually, and it starts with a great race, uh, which is the Triumph Hurdle. Um, some good horses have won this over the past, uh, and often go on to win or run well in the Champion Hurdle. An example of that would have been Catch It the other year, that won the Triumph and then went on to the Champion. And this year, towards the head of the market, there's three real strong horses. Uh, Far West is the one who's second favourite at the moment, but my idea of the winner, trained by Paul Nichols, he's won a couple of times over course and distance on a multitude of different goings as well. Uh, he, I've seen him held up and come through late, I've seen him do it from the front, so tactically he seems very, very versatile. Statistically, with the Triumph Hurdle, like Countrywide Flame was a bit of an exception last year, you need to be a relatively fresh horse to win this and not been on the go a long time. I think whether he'd been clever with Far West, he did quite a few runs early in his campaign to get the experience in, and then after January's trials, he's not been seen, and I think that's a great decision. The course form stands him up very well, the going won't be a problem, and he's my idea of the winner. Our Connor is the market leader, and rightfully so, I suppose, coming over from Ireland. He's got good form on two miles and soft ground, very, very similar profile to Far West. The only reason I'm giving the slight nod to Far West is he just seems to grind out that trip up the hill. A couple of times you think, oh, is something going to happen here, and it just hasn't happened, so I just think Far West might just have the pin, uh, the beating of him. Interesting one as well is for Nicky Henderson, Rolling Star. He's only run a couple of times, but he did win over course and distance from Irish Saints. Irish Saints obviously then went on and won again uh, a couple of weeks back, uh, quite grittily, I think it was at Kempton. Uh, he's currently around 4-1 to one and should improve and, you know, he's one to really, really um, uh, put in the mix. If you're looking for an outsider here, Hidden Justice for John Quinn's quite, um, quite an interesting horse. He's improved uh, for each of his starts over hurdles and the soft ground uh, should be in his favour. Obviously, the yard won it last year, so at 14 to 1, Hidden Justice could run a very big race, but nothing too original for the 1 2 3 for me. It's Far West from R. Connor and Rolling Star. Uh, the county hurdles are tricky one because of multiple entries again, so I've tried to uh, narrow it down as much as I can, use in my head a bit to see who might run, who might not run. Uh, it looks though this is going to be the target of Cotton Mill. Cotton Mill, who actually fancied to run a big race uh, in the champion hurdle if he was going to run into it, and other uh, the big two mile races on the card. I think at 7-1 to one, he's a great price, he's obviously come second to my tent or yours on one of his comeback runs in the Betfair hurdle giving him weight and he was there till pretty much the last and he stayed on really really well, it's the same trip and um, ground pretty much here, it'll be very very tacky and he's got good course form before coming down last time when looking like he was going to put up a serious challenge to Simon Sig, so it'll be interesting to see on Tuesday how Simon Sig and how, how my um Tent or yours run because that could actually frank the form really. Uh, tennis cap was mentioned in a couple of races on the Tuesday and the Wednesday. He's another handicap blip potentially. So wherever he goes, it's gonna have to keep a very close eye on him. He seems to be improving. He's getting in under the radar, and um, he could be very good. Uh, Tanerko Emery ran a stormer in the Imperial Cup, coming home fast and late, uh, just missing out on the win really. Uh, at the weekend, he's going to get similar conditions here, and providing that hasn't taken much out of him, he's on a good weight. Um, so that'll be interesting to see if he goes. Though it was a it was a slug fest on Saturday, so I suppose that has to be taken on a bit of trust really. Um, the horse I do like the look of here as well is Mister Watson for John Joe O'Neill. He's a course and distance winner and got heavily gambled last time and won very very easily. Um, by I think about 10 or 11 lengths and he's got a lovely weight even at the moment off around 10 stone 11 uh, McCoy is likely to take the mount on it and I think this horse could run a very big race indeed even on his uh, burr form not in handicaps he only actually got beaten about 5 lengths by Melodic Rendezvous towards the start of the season and he was fancied for the Supreme Novice before he got beat so Mr Watson could be very interesting indeed now, if you're looking for one at a massive price, I couldn't believe Alofi was 33 to 1 when I looked at him just now. He's got a good weight off 11 stone, and I've actually gone back through his form four times. He's either won or been placed uh, at Cheltenham on soft going. Now, that is, that's pretty impressive. He's won here already this season on soft going. Um, beating Cash and Go, who's highly thought of by the Henderson team. You have to forgive the last run where everything seemed to go wrong. He got hit into quite early doors, and that seemed to put him off. So I suppose the worry is if stuff like that puts him off, this is a massive field in the county hurdle, but it's a place he loves. The ground should be fine. That horse could run a massive race, I think, at 33-1. to 1. It's a hard one to pick, but my 1-2-3 here is Cotton Mill uh, from Mr. Watson and Aloffy. 
The Albert Bartlett I'm taking a punt at here and I'm basing this on the fact that Pont Alexandra and Champagne Fever are highly unlikely to run. Champagne Fever's in the Supreme Novice tomorrow. Pont Alexandra looks like he's uh, going for the Neptune. Um, head in the market, and I think rightfully so, in this one is at Fisher's Cross. Uh, he beat the new one last time over uh, two and a half miles. Looks like he was beaten and just kept on staying on all the way to the line. He's already been a course and distance winner this year and the key to him has always been the fact that he stays well and he needs soft going. He's got Everything in his favour. Tony McCoy again is going to be on board. It looks like he's going to have a great Cheltenham, I think. Uh, Rebecca Curtis seems to be very uh, keen on this horse's chances, so he's rightfully favourite, and I can see him going very well. African Cold for the Twist and Davis Yard has improved all season. The ground should be fine, but the only um, question I have about him is will he stay the three miles plus? on the going um he's only rolled to two and a half mile and the other thing is the twist and davis yards had a few setbacks with viruses and stuff recently so that has to be taken a bit on trust again but no reason you couldn't run a big race two horses at big prices who could go well here is and it depends which race he runs in and i'm going to mention him again later is inish island for the mullins team uh, he only actually finished a length and a half behind that fisher's crossed over three mile in soft going at cheltenham um at the start of the season um, so that was a pretty good run the difference was that he was actually getting I think it was five or six pound that day it's off levels here can I see him reversing it on that no but I can see him running a big race on very similar conditions and the other one which is of interest is Mozeltoff. Um the ground is fine um, he's got really good form if you actually look at the perform in Ireland and he seems to be improving all the time he's 20 to 1 and that is an absolute staggering price I think um, especially because I've got a good feeling for the Irish horses this year, especially now that the soft ground was coming up, because that's all they seem to race on over there. So this could be a very big price for this horse. So if I'm looking for the one, two, three, I think it could be some big prices around here, but I still think at Fisher's Cross will take a lot of beating at five to one. But there could be some each way plays here on Inish Island. He's around 16 to one here, but obviously look for a no run and no bet. And then Mozeltoff at 20s. Um, I hope one of those two run, because that'll be a good each way selection to back up at Fisher's Cross. The fourth race is the Gold Cup, and uh, obviously it's the highlight of the four days for many, and this is the most open Gold Cup for years. Sadly, no Corto Star or Denman or even Imperial Commander this year, so it's lost a lot of the gloss, and even Tidal Bay, who was quite fancy, got injured. So it's quite an interesting one, and it is the most open ever. Bob's Worth is the 3-1 to one favourite. He was the RSA Chase winner last year. Uh, won the Hennessy first time up on soft going, so everything seems to point towards it. The one worry I do have here is a horse having one run and then going going straight to the Gold Cup, so basically he's had one run out of Novice Company, which is, uh, that it's a big ass to us to then go and win a Gold Cup. Uh, I think 3-1 to one's plenty skinny enough, um, even though the vibes from the odds seem to be pretty good. Uh, second in the market is Silvignaco Conti, who's done everything right this year. He beat Long Run in the uh, Betfair, he's then gone on and won um, since then again. Um, in the Denman chase and he's, he's just staying out, stay out the trip and the ground's no problem at all the only worry I have is they've mentioned the course about him in the past being a problem the Nichols Yard and all of a sudden now it's not a problem so I don't know how that can suddenly change in a year but obviously this is a, a yard that have won many gold cups with the likes of Corto Star they've won it with the likes of Denman Seymour Business before then so they know what it takes to prepare a gold cup winner Long Run is next in the market 6-1 to one. Uh, he, which is staggering 6-1 to one for a horse that won the King George uh, he's won a Gold Cup two years ago. He got placed again last year. Um, they got resorted to cheap pieces to hopefully see him seeing out the race, and I think that's the problem. He's not seeing out the necessarily seeing out the races, and his former suppose you'd say of beating Captain Chris in the King George is not staggering because I don't think Captain Chris is an out and out stayer but the way they had him strung out in soft going bodes well for the going on Friday so I could see him running a big race Captain Chris is 16 to 1 the problem I have with him is I don't think he even saw out 3 miles fully around Kempton so 3 mile 2.5 around Cheltenham in soft going I, even though uh, I did actually back him at um, Kempton on Boxing Day I can't see that Cape Tribulation won the Argento, which is seen as a Gold Cup trial, beating the returning Imperial Commander pretty much on the line. While that's a great piece of form, as I said, Imperial Commander was coming back after like a two-year layoff. And Hunt Bull came third, who conclusively didn't stay. So the Burr form there, I just don't know. I don't think he's quite this class. The Giant Bolster placed last year, but he's looked out of sorts this year, and I can't see him doing it again. While an interesting horse, I do think, is first lieutenant at 8-1 to one for Mouse Morris. Um, he obviously placed behind Bob's Worth and run a blinder in the Hennessy. He then went on and run a great race in the Lexus. 
and um, he stays very, very well. And it'll be interesting to see if he goes for this one first, Lieutenant, because the other one that Jiggins Town Stud have is the horse that I fancy for this, and that's Sir Deschamps. He's already a Jewel Festival winner, winning the hurdle two years ago, and then obviously going in in the novice chase last year. People have knocked this horse saying he needs good ground, but if you look back through his form, his best, other than the win at Cheltenham, is a lot of his wins have been on heavy ground. Um, he needed his run first time out and people then said about his run in the Lexus chase but the Lexus chase he finished like an absolute tram and got beaten less than length in that blanket finish with Fleming Star and Tidal Bay and first lieutenant and then the next time out he came out and beat Fleming Star fur and square I know Fleming Star was meant to be a bit uh, under the weather wherever after that but he stayed every yard of the trip there he clearly loves Cheltenham and I think this is my idea of the winner so my 1-2-3 for the Gold Cup will be Sir Deschamps from Sylvan Iarco Conti and Long Run, if I was picking the three at this moment in time. Uh, the Fox Hunt is the race that comes up for the amateurs straight after the Gold Cup, and this is an interesting one. But the two I'm looking at here are the first two from last year, Salsify and Chapeau Turgeon. They know the way around here. They've run very well on the course and won, in fact, both of them over the course many times. But Salsify's form this year has been exceptional, and he does looks like he's no back number, and I can see him re um, keeping the form with Chapeau Turgeon. Chapeau Turgeon, I think, needs a bit better ground, and I think the ground's come right for Salsify. And um, I think at around 7-2, to two, he rates a very good bet to retain his crown here. Backstage is a bit of an enigma. It, he, he wins his races, he does well in points, but on the big occasion, he just doesn't seem to put it all in. I remember he was highly fancied, for, I think it was for the Grand National the other year, and it just didn't happen. Or another race at Cheltenham, it didn't happen. Around 8-1, to one, I'm quite happy to take him on. Tricky Trickster would have come into this one and did well a couple of runs ago, but then next time out of Foss last, he was beaten miles in heavy going. So can I see him suddenly turning it on at Cheltenham in the Fox Hunter? No, I can't really. The interesting horse here, if you're looking for a big price, have a look at that's rhythm at around 16 20 to 1. He's run well at the course before without winning, and the ground should be okay for him. But if you look back at a literal line through the form, at Stratford at the back end of last season, he only got beat two and a quarter lengths by Salsify. Um, and I think that was on good going and I think he is better on the softer going so it's 16 to 1 I'm going to be having a bit of a play each way on him I think as well as Salsify because he could really, really run a good race Farzel's in here he's no back number hopefully he's switched to the herd yard now from Martin Piper or David Piper should say yard so hopefully he's going to carry on going but I think he's just a bit old now so for my 1, 2, 3 here I'm looking for Salsify from Chapeau Turgeon with that rhythm filling the places possibly at a big price quickly on to the Martin Piper hurdle because once again we've got multiple entries in this one but the interesting one this get uh, Jevray Chambert in for the uh, pipe yard David Pipe it's named after his dad's race there was a quote which basically said he was in one of the other hurdles or the Martin Pipe I think it was the Albert Bartlett and the trainer apparently said to the owner could go into the Albert Bartlett and come fourth or fifth or go in the Martin Pipe and we'll win it that takes a lot of confidence and this is a yard that obviously he wants to win it because it's his dad's race basically five to one he stays the trip he's done well at the course ground's fine I think that's a massive price and I don't think he'll be that come fri uh, Friday when the race is uh, Inish Island I mentioned before and I hope he goes for this Martin Pike more than the um Albert Bartlett because I think this is a little less uh, demanding um, for him and once again it's similar conditions as we mentioned to the county hurdle before um, or sorry the Albert Bartlett before and I think the step back and trip here of the Martin Pipe should be a little bit better for him as well so I hope he goes for this but if you want a big price horse have a look at Pendra he's got great form on soft ground and run an absolute screamer um, at Sandown behind Melodic Rendezvous he was with him right till the last fence uh, to the last hurdle I should say he's got a great mark here and if you want to take a literal line of form through there that's one of the best pieces of form on the book so at 14 16 to 1 actually with bet 365 that's a very big price uh, an interesting one is bondage trained by uh, Gordon Elliott as well he's around 16 to 1 but I think he's just going to come up a little bit short here so my 1 2 3 here I'm happy to look at Jevray Chamberton who should win this I think from Inish Island if he runs in this and Pendra uh, the closer as always on the card is the grand annual and a horse I really like here is Alderwood very good hurdler winning at the Punchestown Festival in heavy last year and he's made a great start to his fencing career bar one slip up 
where he literally slipped up. Uh, he's always one up in placed. He's got a great weight here off 10 stone 11, and I think he's going to take a lot of beating around 6 to 1. Shooter's Wood is also a course and distance winner, and he's won on the going before. The one thing that puts me off here, he came last last time, and nothing's shown up, so that's a worry. French Opera is a mainstay in this race, and this is the Johnny Henderson Grand Annual, so Nicky Henderson would love to win it for his dad's, in his dad's name. Course and distance winner. He seems to be running into a form. He loves soft going. 20 to 1 is a huge price. While interesting, have a look at Cervelo for AJ Martin. This is his handicap debut, and off 10 12, he could be the handicap blip. If the ground is perfect for him, he's getting better with every run. He's about 16 20 to 1 again, and this race can throw in some big prices. That could be a massive price, and it could be shorter on the day. My 1 2 3 here I'm looking at is Alderwood from French Opera and Cervelo. Uh, based on what the decks are at the moment so there's the four days we've had some good comments coming in actually saying what do you think about this horse what do you think about that and that's what uh, Cheltenham's all about for me it's about everyone coming together to watch quality racing have a bit of a discussion and uh, hopefully win a few pound on the way well that's the aim of the game anyway um i hope you've enjoyed the four videos we've got here good luck it's where are we now it is about 16 hours till the first race <laughs> or less 15 hours to the first race now so um yeah, fingers crossed. Everyone has a great festival. Hope these videos help. And yeah, you might get some for Aintree. You never know. Cheers. Bye.